Triangle Strategy is the latest Nintendo Switch exclusive by the absolutely brilliant Square Enix. Known for such masterpieces as the Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest series. But will this game live up to the grandeur that we've come to expect from Square? Or will it fall a little flat, becoming the latest Balan Wonderworld? We were huge fans of Octopath Traveler, which we haven't covered here on the channel before, but I honestly don't know why it is definitely a must buy on the Switch. So when we saw the release of Triangle Strategy, it immediately reminded us of the beautiful experience that was Octopath due to the iconic HD 2D art style, and we knew for sure that we were going to pick it up. We were honestly super hyped for this game, which can be a mistake. Sometimes it's better not to have high expectations, so you're not disappointed when they're not met. Prepare for everything, expect nothing. Just like we don't expect you to hit those like and subscribe buttons, we would greatly appreciate it if you did. You can't look at Triangle Strategy and not think of Octopath Traveler. In fact, many of the people responsible for that masterpiece also worked tirelessly to bring us this one, which is one of the reasons why we had such high hopes for this. We trust these people to bring us something special. Octopath Traveler was the first game to bring this beautiful HD 2D art style to life. But what do we mean by HD 2D? Basically, Square Enix has brought the old school graphics of the Super Nintendo into the modern age. They have done this by combining 2D 16-bit-esque sprites with a fully realized 3D background, giving off the illusion that you're playing a SNES-era game in full HD. Hence, HD 2D. They make all of this possible by using Unreal Engine 4, the same one used to create the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So you can imagine the contrast between the 16-bit sprites against the perfectly realized water shimmering in the background, or the specks of dust floating through the rays of sunshine pouring in from the windows. I can't tell if I feel nostalgic looking at it, or if it's something completely modern and new that I'm seeing. In a way, it's both. I am personally a huge fan of this art style. I think it does a great job at paying homage to the classics while also bringing something new and interesting to the table. However, I do understand that art is completely subjective. If you are more into playing realistic looking games such as Hellblade or Call of Duty, then I don't necessarily think this game is for you. But my mum told me to never judge a book by its cover, so if you do only like hyper-realistic games, we still think that there is more than enough here to make it well worth your time and money. So bear with us, there might still be something here for you yet. The vibrant characters you meet along the way aren't only represented in 16-bit, they are also complemented by a more accurate depiction in most menus and some story cutscenes. These hand-drawn portraits are so beautiful, we only wish we saw more of them. For example, we would have loved to have seen them through some of the long dialogue scenes which can last up to 30 minutes. Which leads us perfectly onto our next point, the story. Triangle Strategy is an RPG, so as you can expect, it does have an extremely in-depth and dramatic storyline. It's actually really hard to talk about without giving too much away, but you can expect to see themes of politics, religion, and slavery. You start off your adventure as Sarah Noah Woolfoot, a nobleman hailing from the Kingdom of Glenbrook, one of the three major settlements that make up the realm of Norzalia. This realm has only just recovered from a decades-long conflict called the Salt Iron War. With the three cities controlling separate but equally necessary commodities, this delicate time of peace is hanging on by a thread. Serenoa's noble house, along with his best friend, Prince Roland, will take the responsibility upon their shoulders of guiding Norzalia into the future. Now we must warn you that this game is ridiculously story heavy and dialogue scenes make up a huge chunk of the gameplay, at least 50% if not more, so good thing it's a juicy one. At times we almost felt like we were listening to an audiobook rather than playing a game, which definitely isn't a bad thing as there are so many twists and turns and backstabbing and drama and history and lore and so many things that you'll want to learn. Every now and then you come across a game where you just want to skip the cutscenes and get straight back into the gameplay. This title is definitely not one of those. The story is almost the main draw card here. Admittedly, it does start off a little bit slow, but as soon as you hit the 3-4 to four hour mark, a huge juicy jiggler hits you right in the face and the momentum is maintained from there on out. 
We wish we could tell you more, but honestly, it would just ruin it for you. And this story is something that you have to experience yourself. We are in love with this game, but we must admit that during these long dialogue scenes where there's not much movement, even we might have let a yawn or two slip out. But these scenes are fully voice acted by an extremely talented and diverse cast. This really helps with the immersion of the story and allows you to really become invested in what happens to these people. And you do have a surprising amount of control over exactly what happens to these people. In almost every dialogue or story scene, you'll have choices to make. No matter how big or small they may seem at the time, they have a direct effect on the outcome of your story. Each choice you make will strengthen your convictions or beliefs. Your convictions are what shapes the story and changes what dialogue options will become available to you later on. Each time you strengthen your convictions, you are changing the story in a subtle way. But often you will be given a choice that will obviously and dramatically change the course of your entire adventure. These decisions are made with the help of the Woolfort family heirloom, the Scales of Conviction. Sarah Noah is a diplomatic man, and the opinion of his allies matter. As a result, big decisions are made as a group, with each individual casting their votes on the scales. You do, however, have the opportunity to sway these votes to the outcome of your choice using your convictions. Before the votes are cast, you are able to discuss each character's decision with them, and in doing so, you might be able to change their mind. You really are able to mold the story into a truly unique experience. The game tells you often that your convictions have been strengthened, but doesn't tell you in what way. Much like real life, you never know what someone else is thinking. This makes all of your interactions far more organic and encourages you to really listen to your allies and to listen to all of the dialogue options that are available to you in order to make the decision that you think is right. There's no goal necessarily when it comes to your convictions. You collect them naturally and unknowingly over time, a true reflection of our own lives. The decisions you make in Triangle Strategy lead you down a variety of different paths, culminating in one of many different available endings. The main gameplay loop in Triangle Strategy consists of these huge chunks of story, followed by a battle. Now this title is a tactical RPG, so the fights play out in a tactical fashion. If you've ever played the aptly named Final Fantasy Tactics or a Fire Emblem game, then you will know exactly what to expect. But just in case you haven't... Battles play out on a grid-like arena that can take the form of a cavern to a dock laden with ships. Here your party takes it in turns to navigate the grid system and perform a variety of offensive or defensive moves. Simple sword slashes, invisibility, health regen, and elemental magic are a mere few of the moves available to you. The tactical element really comes from the placement of your team on the grid. Not only do you have to think about what moves or skills to use, you have to also think about the position of your allies in regards to the enemy. Moving one square too many could be the difference between victory and certain doom. There are so many things to keep track of and so many unique elements to take advantage of. Such as if you and your teammate are both on opposite sides of an enemy when you attack, your ally can perform a retaliation strike. One of our favorite things about the battle system in Triangle Strategy though, is that no two characters control the same. Each have their own strengths and weaknesses determined by a class which is unique to them. There are the obvious ones that you can expect from a game set in this period, such as a sword master and a shield bearer, to the more obscure like a cryomancer or acrobat. Coincidentally, we both have the same favorite character, probably because she's freaking awesome. Anna is a spy who can move around undetected by the enemy, as well as attack twice in one turn. Like any self-respecting RPG, all of these classes are fully upgradable. For example, Anna will go from the aforementioned spy to an assassin until she will finally become a master assassin. More abilities will become available to you the higher class you are. Triangle Strategy does a really good job at keeping these battles fresh by changing some of the victory conditions and adding unique mechanics to some of the fields that your battles take place in, like environmental hazards. It's not always the best idea to charge in head first, trying to dispose of everyone as quickly as possible. Sometimes it's more important to keep a member of your team safe. Triangle Strategy truly is a unique adventure. We both experience vastly different stories from one another, 
and you'll likely experience something different again. Meaningful decisions that have a large impact on your adventure is where this game truly shines. This creates a huge amount of replayability and we're almost certain that you'll want to start a new save almost immediately after your first playthrough. Can you explore different areas and experience a different ending? Or are your own personal convictions set in stone? It also helps that we're massive fans of both the tactical RPG genre and the beautiful HD 2D art style. We always had a good chance of enjoying this title and we're happy to report that our expectations were exceeded. We think this is the latest must own for the Nintendo Switch. Will you be adding this game to your collection? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget that liking this video really helps us out a lot. And if you want to see more of us, then subscribe for weekly content. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'm Tom and this is Laura from Some Kind of Gaming and we'll catch you on the next one.